and welcome back to East Hall High School as we get ready to bring you SUV TV Tuesday Night Showcase action. I'm Marcus Burnett, joined by Brandon Clay, and we have just tipped off Banks County versus East Hall. What a matchup here, man. Rabbit Town written all over East Hall Shores. That's where we're at tonight. E Hall, I'm looking forward to this one, man. Should be some great players in this game. Davenport versus Venable. And it won't take us long to see the first foul here in this matchup is going to go against Venable. We'll send Davenport to the free throw line. I tell you what, Davenport is a guy that I absolutely love, an elite basketball academy, All-American. So is Austin Venable, uh, unsigned 2015 Kind of a, a hybrid forward, you know, kind of a, a will play a four or five role here for Joe Dix. I think long term definitely could be a, a guy that's a four in the right situation and system, but also could be a guy that's an interior guy if you go for a round one. He brings a lot to the table, including the ability to posterize somebody at any moment. He puts East Hall on the board first. We've got a one and nothing ball game, driving along the baseline, kick to Venable. Off of his hands, here comes East Hall the other way. It was interesting talking with Coach Joe Dix from East Hall. Even when we set this showcase game up in terms of uh, being able to come and cover it here with SUV TV, and just his wanting to continue to build the brand. I think a lot of people in his position could be complacent. They've had three state title runs here. Frank Davis and Walter Hill and some of the best guys to come through the state of Georgia in a long time have originated and played here, and that's not what he wants to do. They want to continue to get better. They were just in Alaska. I know you talked with him pre-production about that. So a lot of great things going on, as always, here at East Hall. Unable to capitalize at the free throw line there. We still have a one to nothing ball game. Zest Steeple brings it across for Banks County. Going to feed it into oh. Venable. Venable says, feed me, Seymour. And Zez Steeple does just that. Man, that's, that's a great play right there, man. I, not too late to feed that guy, man. Matter of fact, he's just getting started eating on the night. Venable already committed to go, signed actually with Presbyterian in the early signing period. Just collected his thousand point of his career. First guy in Banks County history to do it. Head coach Mike Cleveland has done a great job of really transforming the culture at Banks County to that of a winning program. And they're 17 and three right now as a result. Two to one ball game as a result of that three point play the hard way. The two point portion taken care of. Missing on the back end there was Venable, but we've got a two to one ball game early on. Here's Davenport. The Invenable will go at each other this entire night. Davenport jumps in and finishes. What a great play. I know earlier in the year, you know, he had a 35-point night, had a couple of great nights out in Alaska. He just has become such a consistent offensive threat for Joe Dix. I remember watching last year during a game, I was on the other side of the floor, but on the floor nonetheless, and thought to myself, if this guy really gets it going, he rebounds the basketball so well, he's so bouncy, that he has an opportunity to really be one of the better ones to come out of Hall County in a while. And I think in a lot of ways, his development this summer, you know, both on the club circuit, but then also at the Elite Basketball Academy camps, he attended everything we threw, both the top 40 workouts and the All-American camp, and he looks like a more confident player as a result. Getting the steal coming the other way are the Vikings. Three-pointer is going to touch the support system and go back the other way. Well, and that young man right there, number 10, with the nice long white leggings on, I call those the Kobe Bryants. Got those Kobe's on named Tyler Brown. Joe Dix has been talking to me for about six months, and hey, as Tyler Brown goes, we go, in terms of what he brings to the backcourt, and you're seeing it already, his ability not only to play the point and handle it, but also his ability, oh, as we see an almost dunk attempt there, but you also are seeing Brown as a guy that can score the basketball for the Vikings on the perimeter. Yes, you gotta appreciate the pace and the atmosphere in this one. It's a one point advantage for Banks County early on. It's, we thought we might have had our first poster of the game uh -huh. there on that last attempt. <laughs> uh, that was a heck of a take there by, by Kane. Took that thing strong to the rim, didn't convert it, man, but he went up to go get it. Nicknamed Baby Gurley is what they call him during the football season for the Banks County uh, football team. Had a, a great year on the gridiron, now back with the basketball. Bring it up now, here's Hopkins. Hopkins kind of probing the defense a little bit, gets it over to Davenport. Davenport lulls him to sleep and powers through for the finish. Well, you see the bounce that I talked about there. His, 
Couple of slow flow bounces there, kind of gets you low. And Venable did a great job of bodying up, especially to already have a foul. Oh, what a play there by Steeple. But to finish that thought, Davenport got through on the jump stop, landed, and was still able to get back up and make a play. What an awesome play there by Steeple, though, in transition. He had 22 a couple nights ago, played Lumpkin County, had 11 points, 9 assists, 0 turnovers. He really is turning into a guy, kind of like the way the Hawks use Jeff T. Depending on the night and the matchup, whether they need him to be a scorer or a distributor, he can do both. As they go up top for the oop, doesn't end in traditional oop fashion, but it'll still be a three-point play opportunity for Venable. Uh, what a great pass. We talk about the facilitating, and there you go. A nice 40-foot 40, uh, 40 pass there from Steeple to the rim. Venable takes the contact and finishes. This is going to be a great one here, man. The pace is exactly what you wanted, exactly what we expected. These teams played down to the wire the first time they played this year already with Banks having a three-point lead with 30 seconds left to go, squandering the, the lead, and then East Hall being able to win the game in overtime. So we'll see if they can right the ship this time. You know, talking with Coach Joe Dix about the atmosphere here, you know, really said it's one of those instances to where both sides know each other very well, you know, being in neighboring areas, neighboring counties. So can make for a very nice basketball atmosphere, which is what we have tonight. Man. Banks County looking to inbound. They get it in the steeple. Steeple guarded by Devin Watson. Steeple looking to put it on the deck. Floater. No sir, says Davenport. As he swats that one away and then picks up the pieces. There, oh, what a great pass. The needle. Can't finish inside there. And Orr with the rebound for Banks County. Keep an eye on Zach Orr. Number 42 in the blue. EBA All-American as well. He does the little things. You know, whether it's rebounding the basketball. Talk with Coach Cleveland. He had a 10 and 10 night the other night. Stepped out. He's hitting a couple trail threes. That's another guy. Had an opportunity to watch him at a showcase two falls ago now. So the fall of 2013. Really liked his size, his length. And honestly, he was the reason why I called Coach Cleveland in the first place and was able to get connected with Steeple, Venable, those guys for EBA camp. But Orr's ability and willingness to do all the dirty work on this Banks County team makes him an irreplaceable guy. Great move. Davenport is on fight. Kevon Davenport, Coach Joe Dick said eighth grade he got cut, and in ninth grade you couldn't depend on him to hit a layup. He <laughs> said all that to show the improvement that he's making. Layup's not a problem at all. That's just one part. Oh, there you go. Steeple right there to Orr with the two hands. Steeple getting the crowd fired up. That guy's going to play with the energy and intensity you want, as you can tell by the Mohawk haircut. 7-10 to 10 ball game after that dunk by Orr. It's been so great to watch these young men. As you're going to see Davenport now face up again. Boy, and they're really going to him on every single possession right now. Like, the quick flex just to let the crowd know he's involved, man. And why wouldn't you go to the young man? He's been instant offense, add water and stir every time. Or tries to do a little too much there. Cookie's taken by Hopkins. Mm. He's going to pull up. Huh. Flag. Huh. The scream from Hopkins. I love the – and I told you during the girls' game, the atmosphere in this building changes when the game gets rolling. Steeple with another assist there for Venable. And literally, we're going back and forth, man. This is exactly what you drove back from Dayton, Ohio, in there for, man. As Venable said, hey, let me get in where I fit in as well. He scores that one. They missed the shot. Steeple with the rebound. He's been the catalyst so far these past couple possessions. Going to pull it back out. And we're going to have a blocking foul. Going to go against Hopkins there. It's a great start to the game here. Just the tempo and the pace. And you're going to see wholesale substitutions is what Joe Dix is known for. Banks will use more of a traditional one or two at a time sub. About every four minutes, you're going to see Joe Dix bring in four or five new guys. He's going to dress 16 or 17. They just got some routines here in Rabbit Town, and that's one of them. So we're going to have the ball go the other way. Oh, correction, it's going to be a... Uh, oh. Actually, I think oh. Orr. <laughs> Everybody was under the impression that Orr had gotten fouled. But in actuality, they got Kamal Wiley, who had just transferred in to the school right before the start of the season. But they got Wiley with that foul there. That's going to send it back East Hall's way. Hanging in the air, taking some contact, unable to get the shot to go. And is now in the hands of Steeple. Well, and you can see early why, even though we hadn't been able to convert the, the baskets, you can see why Brown is such an integral part of this East Hall team. His ability to create, make plays. Oh, look at Steeple. That boy 
Coach Cleveland and I talked about it before the game. When he's on point distributing the basketball and facilitating, he's going to have an opportunity to play this game at the next level somewhere. And Steeple makes it an 11 to 14 ball game after that last assist. Here comes Banks County the other way, drops it oh, off. Great pass. Or with the finish. Well, when you look at Oren Venable being the uh, recipient so far, the pace of this game, in theory, with the numbers and the depth favors um, East Hall. But quite honestly, with Steeple at the point, if he can stay in this game and stay out of foul trouble, it just might favor Banks in terms of his ability to produce in the open floor, find the open man, or convert the shot himself. He's done just that. You see his hands over his head as he's trying to catch his breath a little bit. He looks at Mike Cleveland and he says, hey, coach, I need one. Coach Cleveland said, yeah, you can catch your breath. That's about all I can do tonight, man. <laughs> he knows they're in for a 32-minute battle here in Rabbit Town. He's got Zesma Steeple prepared mentally for that. As it is 12 to 16 after that most recent free throw. Appreciate you all joining us for this SUV TV Tuesday night showcase game presented by Peach State Basketball. And, you know, Brandon, you've been able to see several of these players in a camp setting, skills and drills playing against some of the state's best. Talk about how that translates over to now being able to see them here in this high school game setting. Well, there's a familiarity, you know, I think first and foremost that allows you to come out here and compete. I heard a great quote the other day, you know, Ohio State star Georges Niang, and he talked about working camps with some of the other top guys in the, the country and just the confidence it gives you. You know, you come out here and your friends they're going to talk to each other after the game. But for right now, you know, they're, they're going to go at each other. They're out here competing. And for 32 minutes, that friendship is put aside. So it's not that being friends, I think, is a bad thing in any way. Shape. First time talking about him, that's another young man that's been a part of the EBA circuit this past year and has done some really good things. And you've watched his game grow. We're going to have a foul there. As they battle for the rebounds, that's going to be the first foul against Keyron Davenport. No, it looks like they actually really got blue on that one, Marcus. They've got Wiley. That's going to be two now on him for Banks. That's an important foul. That's his second foul. They're going to have to go get him. And sure enough, Zach Orr goes right to the table. You just hope he doesn't pick up his third before they can get him out of the game. Three-pointer up top. Ooh. Good-looking shot. Won't stay down there for Huey. Well, that's a big shot. If he can do that, Huey, and stretch the defense, you know, he's that offside guy that we talked about even in the, the girls game when you have the ability to play, you know, a Davenport who's bouncy and a rim guy, and then you put Huey next to him on the side, now you've got two guys that can affect the game defensively, but if Huey can shoot the trail three the way we talked about or shooting the trail three, now they kind of cancel each other out, which is exactly what you want if you're Joe Dix. Talked about coach, talked to coach about some of the, you know, more unsung pieces on this Esau team. First two names he mentioned was number 10, Tristan Cooper, and the aforementioned number 42, Roderick Huey. Yep. Or checks back into the game, having a seat there. It's going to be number 34, Kamal Wiley. And this is the place Venable's got to be able to make those shots for this team as much as he gets the ball on the interior. They're going to need him to be able to be effective at the free throw line he was on that trip. Good looking shot knocked down there. That's Cooper. That's a big shot for him. That's a guy that can heat up. Ooh, nice move there by Soons. But well, we talked about, you know, Carly Winters in the first game. You know, when Cooper is a guy that can give East Hall some of that same flow on the boys' side as you see or do the little things there with the offensive rebound, cleanup, and the putback. Or doing a great job of being the glue guy there. Makes it a four-point game in favor of Banks County. They get inside, Yui nearly gets tied up, trying to work oh, on Venable. Great block Venable there. Gets a piece. Great block to stay vertical, and then the foul on Davenport. But when you look early, we talked about Zach Orr. He already has eight. Part of that is Steeple's ability to distribute, get him in some great places. Part of that is his willingness to do the things on the glass to find the basketball in his hands. And it's no different than what he was doing at EBA camp. We're fortunate here to have a lead trainer, Adrian Penland, in the building sitting courtside with us. One of the things that he said about Zach Orr's game was just his willingness to work, his mentality, and same thing for Simmons, who has the ball in his hand right now. SWAT team called by Kevon Davenport. He smacks that one against the window, kicks it to Hopkins, the south call, off the mark on the tray ball. Or gets it ahead, shot. I mean, you know what's interesting with Davenport, it is very rare 
especially at the high school level, that you have to be aware of the offside defender. Normally, if you beat your guy, you can get to the rim and you're just going to finish it. You almost have to be able to flush a dunk over his head to not worry about Davenport because he can get you at any moment. And that is going to send us to the break. We've got a great one brewing here in East Hall. A big part of the excitement thus far has been the play of Zez Steeple, the point guard for Banks County. Is here we see him creating the space, dime drop, Zach Orr doing the rest. Appreciate you joining us here on SUB TV. We'll be back shortly. Second quarter about to get started. 15 to 19 ball game, four point advantage for the Leopards of Banks County. Marcus Burnett joined by Brandon Clay. Brandon, a great first quarter, man. Glad we have got the second tipped off. I was trying to keep the EBA stat sheet away from uh, Vince Smith, man. <laughs> Sorry, Vince, but y'all, it's been just phenomenal. Did you see Davenport with a nice little face up, That's touch about out there. Tough as keeping that guy out of the painted area. I mean, Goodness, man, he's got 11 here early, and he's just getting it rolling. And one of the things, when you look at Venable with seven early, Orr's got eight early, Davenport now with 11. So it's been an interior-based game. Simmons with the draw, you got to feel him. We talked to him. I can't talk enough about Davenport's ability from the offside to be a player in this game. That's the second time now he just pinned a shot to the backboard. And you heard Coach Cleveland say right here in my ear during the break, you got a jump stop on that one. You're definitely not going to shoot it over him. You got a jump stop. So now this time you get in there, he steps over, draws the charge, still no jump stop, and now he's put himself in a position to turn the ball the other way. I mean, he just is such an active guy defensively. It makes it hard even for a guy like Austin Venable on the offensive end to be impactful. I think credit to both of those big men, given the opposition that they're facing, to not be in foul trouble at this point. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I think that goes back to the whole EBA series. You know, these guys have had an opportunity now. It's rare to find guys 6'6", six, 6'7", six, 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 So when you can get a collection, I know at All-American Camp, we had nine guys, you know, that were at least 6'6", six, six or above. Uh, EBA Top 40 workout in the fall, eight guys that were at least 6'6", six, six or above. So these guys are getting used to playing with other guys in their height range and in their skill set range at the same time fun watching the contrasting styles when you look at a Venable and Davenport. Davenport a little more bouncy, strong as well, but Venable a little bit more on the ground, kind of like your Zach Randolph type. Might not jump extra high, he'll dunk it, but it's going to use that body inside. Get stuffed on the reverse there. Well, and that's something right there. You see him go through to the left. That's something they'll work with him on, I'm sure, Presbyterian. If you take that hard bounce and you have something on the right, Go ahead and finish on the right. Don't make the game harder for yourself. He actually drove into the second line defense on the other side waiting on it. Nice, nice defense there. Davenport knew exactly what was coming with the quick inbounds and then the lob. Tough play there for Steeple. Give me that rebound inside there by Davenport. Here comes Watson the other way. Gets it to a trailing Kevon. Kevon going to pull the jumper and show off that aspect this of His game has come such a long way. His ability to hit the 10-footer, the 15-footer, you know, really the only thing offensively he doesn't do is shoot that trail three. And when you're getting all those other things from him, you don't necessarily need him to do that. There's Huey on the backside, but look at who cleans it up. Zach Orr, man. This is great basketball in the interior. It's rare that you're going to find four guys that are as good and as active as these four guys throughout the course of the game. Four guys we're talking, obviously Venable with Davenport, but also Zach Orr and Roderick Huey who are guarding each other as well. Steeple gonna try the baby jumper, Cash. Now that's his fourth point, but I tell you what, early in this game, he has established himself as the dominant playmaker on the perimeter, really for either team right now. We'll wait and see if a guy like Brown is able to get rolling, Cooper for East Hall, even a Watson. You know, they got multiple guys that could be that, but Steeple has come out and put his stamp on this game early. Davenport continuing to show his bag of tricks as he's having fun out there. It's hard to defend that, man. <laughs> like, you can be there and you can contest that, but when he makes that spin, he caught the ball. Great read. He was patient. When he's doing that, there isn't much that you can do. 
Right now, he is filling up the stat sheet. Already has 17 of the 23 for the home team. And if they can isolate him possession after possession after possession like that, this is going to be a long night for everybody in here wearing blue. You have a couple substitutions for the Vikings in number 10, Tyler Brown. Uh, number 52, Jason Winters, as well as number five, Andy Lara. Kevon Davenport going to get his first rest of the game. I'm sure very much like we talked about with uh, Steeple and with Venable for uh, Banks. It won't be long, maybe a couple of minutes, but the way he's scoring the basketball, we got to go right back to him. Cooper takes it coast to coast. Makes it a four-point game in favor of East Hall. Yep. Behind the back goes Steeple. It's going to be tripped up. They get it ahead. Here's Cooper. Oh, smart play there by Cooper. Smart play there by Cooper to feel the whistle coming and toss that basketball up so he can get to the line. I think also, you know, if you're going to commit that foul there by Treve Kane, he commits it before the three-point play is an option. Got to go and you got to go and wrap him up. Yeah, <laughs> that NBA stuff, man. You got to go and wrap him up and make sure everybody in the gym knows. Hey, man, he's not getting this shot off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he could have went the wrap up route, but judging by Kane and kind of like the, the gentleman's stature and <laughs> shoulders, I don't think he planned on letting that three point play be an option. You know, he got to stop because he got the foul he wanted on the floor, but. He was prepared to follow through, B. Clay. <laughs> I love it, man. When you're starting to get now into the depth that we talked about for both groups, you've got multiple subs on the floor. I want to make sure we touch Jordan Barnett, number 24, in the blue. Another guy who's been involved with our EBA series, our top 40 workouts. Cape Bullet heating up at any time if he can get an open look from beyond the arc. So just one to keep an eye on here as the game progresses. Five minutes, 11 seconds and counting left to play here in the second quarter. Steeple gets it in the corner. You said he could heat up. Just short on that one by Barnett. Cooper pushing it the other way. Oh, that's a good move. Everything but the bottom of the net there. Picking up the pieces and getting it done, Tyler Brown. When well, you're feeling the East Hall run right here, and they've been able to do it without Davenport. Now, Mitch kind of wear you down. Steeple, some of the plays that he made early, they haven't been able to get those easy looks been a couple of turnovers you see another uh, kind of a forced play there not being able to get ahead in transition he was getting a full step Marcus early in the game Davenport's break wasn't very long but Steeper was getting a full step ahead of the defense to make a play uncontested with no contact East Hall's done a good job now of keeping a body on him almost at all times since that initial flurry there to start the game We've got four minutes, 33 seconds, and counting left to play here in the second quarter. Seven-point advantage for East Hall. Davenport says, why not? Give me a tray ball. I just got in from Alaska. <laughs> why not the tray ball? As it looks like they're going to rule that a, a two-pointer. Thousand point for Devon Davenport. What a, what a phenomenal moment for Joe Dixon, for Mike Cleveland to be okay with that. You know, a lot of visiting coaches don't want that in this type of game. You're not going to stop the flow of the game. But for, for Davenport and for Joe Dix to take a minute to honor him, to let everybody in here honor him for his 1,000 points, that's a class act. And what a way to come out and get it, man. I'm sure Coach Dix was thinking, man, if you can get it by the end of the game, it'll be great. This guy has come out and gotten it literally in the first 12 minutes of action, man. I mean, you talk about that discipline, and it just goes, it speaks volumes, like you mentioned, a class move by Coach Cleveland, but Coach Dix got, has his players focus on the mission. They can take a step away, celebrate the milestone, gives Davenport props, and then gives him a pat on the chest. Now let's go back to the mission, young man, right no. back to it. Hey, he's not wasting any time, man. It's been impressive. You know, like I said, just the intensity in here, man. They've really turned this thing up an entire notch from where they started the game, and Davenport's played well all game, but they've been able to get some points from some other places. And you see right now Mike Cleveland pushing a couple of buttons. Simmons will go back in for Barnett, trying to get something going here offensively for Banks. I got some blood here for East Hall. They're going to get a, get a jersey looked at as they get a sub in here. Watson checks back in the game. Four minutes, 11 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Banks County looking to get it in. They get it to Simmons. Simmons pushing it, drops it off. Venable, finish. Well, and Simmons does a great job of getting up and down the hill. I really loved coaching him at camp and working with him. I think he's got a ton of talent. He's just got to make sure that he jump stops. Ooh! Tough move there by Brown on the spin to finish right there. You make a play, Simmons. I got a play for you right back. 
Question of what can Brown do for you? Answer right there as he gets the giant killer floater to go, making it 23 to 33. Steeple gets it over to Orr. Orr trying to drive baseline, and we're going to have a foul there. It's going to go against Jason Winters. Well, that's a big play right now, and then it's going to send Orr to the free throw line for Banks. This is a great opportunity here in the next three minutes. Both teams in the bonus, but maybe more so for Banks than he's tall right now, who's kind of rolling offensively. This gives them a chance to kind of slow the game down, be able to put themselves in a position, hopefully, to get some easy buckets, an easy score or two, and then be able to go from there to get themselves back into this game. Your thoughts on who does a, a sped up pace or a faster pace favor in this game well, when you look at the pieces on Like the I said, I, I thought East Hall, because of the depth, because of how many they like to play, because of how they sub, definitely they want a game to be really, really fast. And the Davenport right now is having a heck of a half. Let's toss that in there. Yeah. Uh, I do think Banks can play in transition with them. I just don't think you want to put those kind of minutes on Zesman Steeple because if you're playing that kind of pace, you're going to have to play him 31 minutes. You're not going to be able to play him any less than that. Oh. Venable going to get called wow. for the offensive foul. It's the big fella shakes his head, not in agreement with the call. Well, now we go back to, you know, once again, that charge circle, or lack thereof, that changes the game. It allows somebody to kind of camp out. That's the second one on Venable, more importantly. And you see now, even with his versatility, he's playing the top of the one, two, two zone. So. Three-pointer off the mark, long rebound, put in by Steeple. Steeple going to stop and up. pop at the tough elbow. Pull up. Steeple says, tough for who? Hey, that guy's done a heck of a job of really changing his game. And I, I used the Teague reference earlier because I've had the opportunity to watch him at multiple levels, the collegiate level, obviously the pro level, and just finding when to score and when to distribute. That was a great time to score the basketball. He made the right choice, and then he's got the skill set to actually make the play that he saw. Good game so far by Steeple as they try to cut this eight-point deficit. Nice comparison to Jeff Teague, we play. What state is that guy from? I think he's from South Carolina, man. Oh. <laughs> that was too easy, man. But, no, definitely an Indiana guy. You know you had the opportunity to watch Macy O.T. do his thing with a cool 51 spot there flying to the hoop. Yui. Oh. Well, and there's that defensive, offside defensive presence we talked about. But from Huey this time and not from Davenport. So, you know, it's such a joy to watch two teams play each other that both have a, a four and a five presence because you just don't see it very often in this day and age. You know, you have four guys on the floor willing to play that position, have the skill set to play it at a high level, and then be able to convert plays on both ends of the floor. As Steeple at the free throw line. Chance to make it a 27 to 33 game. Splits the pair of free throws. Well, and that's a place that Banks is gonna have to be good at tonight as the game continues to go on. It actually worked out in their favor, honestly, Marcus. Like they're about to call a jump ball, but it's gonna work out for them. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Austin Venable. Well, we'll call it a pass there from Wiley. He threw that one off the glass. That's a heck of a pass from Wiley to Venable, man. He knew he had a great insurance policy following up behind him. <laughs> Got to know where that young man is. That young man is that instant heat check, man. Like we said, could be Carly Winters, could be Trista Cooper. Either way, East Hall's got a gunner ready for you. And love a player like Cooper because he shows you what he can do on the offensive end, but also the lead charge taker here for this East Hall team as well. So not, ju not just about the appealing, the scoring, about doing whatever it takes to win. Took 14 charges in Alaska. Because. That's awesome, man. Well, and he's such a good athlete. You know, I think a lot of times we stereotype shooters as non-athletes, and that definitely, oh, what a tough shot from that young man's there, Steeple. But we stereotype shooters as not good athletes. He's a very good athlete who happens to be able to make an open shot. Oh, let's give it to him one more time. As his ears must have been burning. He continues with his strong play as he splashes that one to make it 30 to 39. Now we're gonna call him Mr. Cooper before this one's all over if he keeps knocking down those shots, man. Hey, for all any other 80s babies out there, we can all appreciate hanging with Mr. Cooper. <laughs> we're doing it tonight at East Hall. At the free throw line now is Steeple. 
Minute four on the clock. Definitely, once again, want to thank Vince Smith for the heck of a job he's doing with the EBA score sheet here, keeping me informed, keeping you guys informed as well. It's Kevon Davenport. 34 there in the white jersey for those just joining us. Checks back into the game for East Hall. So we've got a 32-39 ball game. Well, and right now, Banks County's four for nine from the line, man. Once again, credit to Vince Smith, our statistician, for being on top of that. That's not going to be good enough in this game. You're going to need to shoot it in the 70s, maybe even low 80s, the way this was being played. You've got to convert on your free opportunities. Wiley gets it to Orr. Orr crosses over. Spins, oh, what a move. What a move. Finishes. You've got to love the way that this young man is playing. This has been a game play from the inside out. Cooper and those guys are making plays. Steeple's making plays. Wiley's making plays. It's just a handful of guys. This has been an awesome way to get this thing tipped off. Orr hands it off to Steeple. Steeple kicks it into another gear. Tough shot. Good defense. Better offense by Zaz Steeple. Call that man Zaz Teague, man. Let's go. <laughs> it's 11 in the quarter right now for, for Steeple. Here's Simmons. He's got seven seconds to work with. Tries to get it to Wiley, but Jenkins breaks it up. Orr to Guess pick it up. Guess who's there? Zach Orr. <laughs> Shots off, and that is going to do it. That's awesome. What a great flurry to close out the quarter, though, man. I punch, you punch, you punch, I punch. Man, let's take this one to the half, young fella. And we look at a couple CoachHemi.com instant replays that will send us into halftime. First one, got to be able to look at the play we've seen from Tristan Cooper. As he shows you how well he can stroke the shot with that last one. There's something about those left-handed shooters, man. <laughs> I know you've got an affinity for him, being one yourself, B. Clay. I've got to witness a couple of those up close and in person. But we got to take a look at what Zez Steeple has been able to do as we see him kind of lull him to sleep a little bit, kicking into another gear, elbow jumper. You knew I was taking it. Bang, bang. Doesn't matter. <laughs> He knocks that one down. That's going to send us to halftime. It's a 36 to 39 ball game. Stick with us as we'll bring you more of the SUV TV Tuesday night showcase here presented by P State Basketball. Crossover Intelligence for basketball can save you hours of time. We break down and stat your game film for you and act as your video coordinator by giving you searchable clips, advanced statistics, shot charts, and a lot of other great info that you can access from any PC or through our iPad application. Just upload your video through the Crossover website and 24 hours later your film will be completely indexed and tagged. Each play will become its own video clip, allowing you to search the footage for anything you'd like. Here we'll take a look at all three pointers that were made in the fourth quarter. All of your offensive and defensive sets can also be tagged, so you can view the appropriate clips and determine which plays are achieving the best results. You can add any clip to a playlist or highlight reel and share everything with your players or assistant coaches. Crossover will also provide you with all of the numbers from each game, including complete player stats for both teams and advanced metrics like these. We even take the shooting numbers a step further with an interactive shot chart that lets you visualize the data. Filter by player, quarter, makes or misses and click on any shot to watch the corresponding video. Crossover Intelligence will keep you from spending hours in the film room and get you back to actually coaching. Together, we can turn smarter video into more wins for your team. That's the crossover effect. Crossover Intelligence for Battle.
And welcome back here to East Hall High School as we get ready to kick the second half off. 36 to 39 ball game. I'm Marcus oh. Burnett joined by Brandon Clay. Huh. It's been a great one so far and with the way we start that second half off, why would anything be different? Welcome back, man. Welcome back. As if we never left. Let's keep this thing rolling. What a great play there by Wiley. Takes the contact from Davenport. The game has been so good that we now have a student section that has evolved. There was no student section in the first <laughs> half, and we now have a student section for Bates County, led by Gabby Kennedy, who helped lead them to the win. <laughs> Brandon, for anybody that did not have the pleasure of joining us for the first half, give them your best nutshell summary of what's got us to this point, 38 to 39. Um, Kevon Davenport has scored his 1,000 point. He had 20 plus in the first half. Venable had 13. Zach Orr in double digits also had seven rebounds. I mean, it's just been a game full of players making plays. Desmond Steeple for Banks County, up and down, distributing, getting people involved. Hit 11 himself in the second quarter, doing his best Jeff Teague impression. Tristan Cooper, the lefty, making shots. I mean, it's just been an awesome atmosphere for a high school basketball game, no question. That's Venable. This is that first free throw, second one on the way. String music. Well, and we talked about him needing to make more of that string music from the free throw line, and Banks does as well as a team if they want to come out of here with this win. But they've gotten some really good production. Free throw shooting, probably the only thing the coach really could complain about outside of the occasional turnover here or there. But inside of the floor of the game, they could have been left for dead at 39 to 31. The whole atmosphere in this place had changed. Tyler Brown was yelling. Cooper was yelling. Every time a book got made, somebody from East Hall was yelling and they were able to withstand the tide here on the road and make a play. Sneak it in the back door and getting the bucket as a result there, Tyler Brown, making it a 41 to 39 ball game. When you can't let on baseline out of bounds, but you go two, three zone, and you go two, three zone to protect the basket, man. You can't let a guy cut from the elbow and find himself on the opposite block for a score. Wiley got the first two points of the second half. He misses on that shot attempt, gets a rebound. Let me make sure I say this, because this is huge in terms of progression. Kamal Wiley and Venable are two interior-based guys in terms of how they play. Zach Orr has come so far in his game, skill set-wise, that Mike Cleveland feels comfortable enough to play all three of them on the floor together at the same time. Speaks volumes to what Orr has done over the past 12 months in his game, because we could not have said that about that young man. Even in the springtime when he came to EBA Top 40, he wasn't at that place in his game yet. He's come a, a long, long way, as this point guard, Desmond Steeple, who's shooting these free throws. Pass Steeple good on the second. We've got a 41 to 41 ball game after that Zez Steeple trip to the free throw line. It's Tyler Brown with it up top. We're going to see a little bit of a zone look here from Banks County. Austin Venable at the very top of it. Or gets the steal. That pass intended for Davenport. We're going to push it the other way. The spin and the finish. <laughs> this is film that he's going to be able to use to send to schools. The way that he's playing right now, 
is just phenomenal. Not doing too much, felt the pressure coming. I actually remember sitting with Caitlin Duncan watching these guys play Habersham. She had just finished, and I was telling her how impressed I was with Zach and how I thought that it was going to translate into this regular season, and it's exactly what has happened. He's playing great basketball. Davenport misses on that second chance opportunity. Pulled out of there by number 22, Kane for Banks. Now it's in the hands of Steeple. So Banks County with a two point advantage. Steeple showing off that mid range. This is the game of runs right now. When you're watching Banks make a run, they were down 39 31. They've come out, punch, punch, punch. Now a 14 0 run here that finished up the first half, extends into the second half. I hear Adrian Pinlin on my left side. Dang. As this steeple hits that pull up. And coming from a Omaha County star guard, that's high praise. Four point advantage. Oh, great pass. Okay, they're gonna call the call him for the block there. Or oh, what a great pass there from Brown to evade the contact, slide off of that shoulder, and still be able to drop it off the Davenport. I'm sure Coach Dix would rather have the bucket and keep playing, man. Checking back into the game for the Vikings, number four, Devin Watson. To make sure we get the perspiration off the court. You know, tore me to pieces when I heard about Kalia Robbins' injury off of a wet spot, you know, on, on the floor. You know, you hate to hear of anybody getting injured, but something that could possibly be avoidable, like cleaning up the moisture, you hate to hear that happen. No question, man. I actually had an opportunity to see her this weekend over at Archer High School. Uh, Kalia Robinson is signed with Georgia. Future head coach Andy Landers was there uh, representing the Bulldogs. Really, really good event, man, but just an opportunity to spend some time with her. She's in great spirits, man, and uh, know that the SUB TV and Peach State basketball teams all passed their best along to you, kid. That was definitely Kane. Oh, great pass. Passing his best along to Venable. Venable with the flush. That's big boy basketball right there, man. You've got a powerful guard, attack, find Venable there, and you see Joe Dix take the timeout. And, and this is the great thing about not only high school basketball, Marcus, but it could be college, it could be pro. I had the opportunity last night to sit down and study the Oklahoma-Kansas men's game. Kansas was up almost 20 at the half. Bill Self, those guys feeling great. Kelly Oubre Jr. is playing awesome. They're rolling. Oklahoma's one of the better teams in the country for a reason. Well, they make a push. They cut that thing down to four within six minutes of the half. And then from there, it was just back and forth and back and forth. And Kansas got the big win at home defending Fog Allen Fieldhouse. But it was just a great example of a game like this, how when you've got two teams that are both really competitive, there's going to be an ebb and flow. But you've got to expect inside the last five minutes that you're going to have to battle it out to come home with a W. This game definitely following suit. Is this 41 to 47, four minutes, 34 seconds. Left to play here in the third quarter. Watson with it, gets it up top, over to Cooper. That's 16 on the night for Venable. Oh, nice play there by Huey. You see the athleticism there. Roderick Huey went up to punch that one. <laughs> it, it points me back to a, a moment that we had in the first half. Kane doesn't plan on allowing too many three-point play finishes. <laughs> because he, the young man fouls with a purpose. Oh, and he's so strong. I mean, I think that's the, the biggest thing you talked yeah. about his frame, and I definitely agree. As my, my dad would say, built like a Mack truck, man, just strong, compact. And so it, you can see him, they're going to get him. He's got his third foul there. But that's a good play on the backside to not just allow Huey the opportunity to go up for the layup or for the dunk as he did there. And now you're forcing him to earn his points from the strike. As he does that with the second free throw, 42 to 47. Pulls East Hall to within five or with it, guarded by Cooper. Make a note here, East Hall playing that man, but they now have done what their girls program tried to do earlier to Duncan, which is literally deny the basketball to Steeple at all costs. Watson is in right now to face guard Steeple. Anytime he's in, they're gonna try to keep the ball out of his hands and force one of the other four players for Banks to initiate the offense. We're going to have an and one there. Bang, bang, play. And the beneficiary of it, Kevon Davenport with the and one. It's an interesting call there. It's one of those 50-50 calls that can go either way. 
Davenport attack that looked like Orr was there from a time perspective. Now, whether he had established himself, you know, didn't lean his shoulder one way or the other is a, a whole nother discussion. But unfortunately for Mike Cleveland and his staff, what that does, it puts them in a position now where now Orr has three, Kane has three, so they're starting to deal with some of that foul trouble that was happening in the girls' game as well. And now you really start to chess and checker your pieces based on foul trouble here through the remainder of the third quarter. We refer to our team EBA scorebook run by Vince Smith, uh, PSV. I believe that's his first bucket since that 1,000-point milestone yep. early in the first half. Well, Vince made a great point. He said, and Joe Dixon to call that timeout. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously you want to make sure that you recognize the young man for what he's done. But every now and again, that can not take you out of the flow if you're out there killing. You know, just something that simple can, can take the flow in, away from you. But he's a great player. He's going to get it back. Cooper trying to bounce that. Stiebel gets a hand on it, uh -oh. but Davenport. Oh. Good, good take there. Like I said, anytime he catches it, it could be a poster, man. Oh. Davenport wanted that shot to stay down. For a chance for the three-point play, it doesn't, but he'll have two from the line. Hey, just got a, a message in here from Adrian Penland, Jason Hobb. Uh, T-shirt guy here in the area that does all of his camps. And anybody that's a friend of Adrian Penland is a friend of ours watching SUV TV live. But make sure you use the hashtag SUV TV if you're tuning in. We'll get your stuff in here on the air. Appreciate you watching this SUV TV Tuesday night showcase presented by Peach State Basketball. And what a showcase of talent, both team and individual, it has been up to this point. 45 to 47. Kevon Davenport pulls East Hall to within one. 3.28 and counting left to play in the third quarter. There's Simmons. Gets it over. Bagley, no sir, says Davenport. Just swats that one out. Coach Mike Cleveland said it best, man. You have got to know it's either a jump stop or it is a pass when that guy is around the lane. And the same thing can be said for, for Huey there. Great finish by Watson in the open floor, by the way. As the one-man SWAT team helped spark that fast break, East Hall now leads by one. Another one is Roderick Huey says, let me get some of that as well. Palms the ball, three-pointer on the way. Vikings can't get it to go. Hopkins, second opportunity, he passes in. Well, in Utah, I mean, once again, the ebb and flow. It was 47 to 41 a minute ago. What did I say, man? Strap your seatbelts, yo. Nobody's going anywhere. This is going to be a good one. And sure enough, East Hall now goes on their own 9-0 run. A couple of plays here and there, a couple of stops defensively. Huey and Davenport change some shots as they do. And now, all of a sudden, we're right back in this thing. Loving the atmosphere here at the gymnasium at East Hall. 47 to 50 game, two minutes, 25 seconds. Yeah, good good call here. You're going to get that one on the end line. Bagley got pushed from behind. And it looks like the way the game's being played right now, I wouldn't be surprised to see both teams into the bonus by about the six, six and a half minute mark at the latest in the fourth quarter, which means in honesty, Marcus, this game could be done from the line in terms of what's going on. You're going to have to convert free throws, and we've talked about that all game for both squads. It was the Banks County varsity girls team that was able to do just that in terms of converting free throws oh, in their win. Shot. Wiley's been productive. His ability as he hit that 15-footer now, he hit a 12-footer to get the half started. The nice little shake and bake Ricky Bobby there from 12 feet. And then now that tough shot there on the wing from 15, he's showing a lot of production. And in a time where Zach was out with three, they really need him to come on and play big for the next two minutes. Cooper, all he needs is a little bit of room. Off the mark on that one. Nice box out. Good box out right there by number 24, Banks County, Trace Bagley. Well, and that's what you've got to do is you've got to put your body on somebody. Everybody's always yelling over the back and all these other things. And it's like, well, no. Like, if you don't box out yeah. Huey, then you're not going to be in a position to get those calls. Bagley took his body, physically put it on Huey, and was able to force the referee to make that call there. Simmons tight rolling along the baseline. He's going to be pushed. Believe that foul is going to go against Watson. It will. One minute, 43 seconds left to play here in the third quarter. Checking in for East Hall, number 14, Cedrion Morse. 
and number five, Andy Lara. Simmons will get it. They try to find Venable. Davenport's all over it. Well, and at this point, Davenport is very aware. As you see him handle the basketball in transition, look at that. But he is very aware of finding the shooter. Bam! To finish the original ball, though, Davenport is very aware that they want to go to Venable every chance they get on the baseline out of bounds. So you almost have to start it on one side, send it to the other side, get a ball reversal if you're going to get him involved because they're looking for it on that initial pass. Simmons with it. Uses the screen, and he's going to be fouled on the floor. So 16 fouls for East Hall. It looks like that'll be the seventh there. Going to yeah. send Simmons to the free throw line. This is one thing he doesn't do a lot of in terms of shooting the basketball, but when he does, he's proven himself to be a capable shooter, whether it be the jump shot or the free throw. He just really wants to pass the basketball. It's his nature as a player. Good on the first. He's a really good defender on the other end. I talked about coaching him at camp. And he's a great complimentary guard in that way that he can defend, he can make the open shot when need be, but he also can get into the lane and penetrate. And you see an example of that right there. It's now a 51 to 53 ball game. Banks County to within two, back and forth. Game up to this point. As we approach that fourth quarter, we've got about a minute left on the clock here in the third. Davenport has it. He's looking. It's go time. Oh, no, yes. sir, says Venable. If at first you don't succeed, <laughs> trying and trying again. There is Davenport as he makes it 51 to 55. Hey, he wasted absolutely no time dusting himself off and trying again. Man, that's a great play though by Davenport at the rim. Lara jumps to pass the ball as it knocked out of bounds. Oh, oh it looked like the ball hit East Hall. They got tipped. This crowd is not going to let that call go oh, without wow. voicing their displeasure. Oh wow. That that's a tough, that's just a tough break. It's the way the game goes sometimes. Gotta hunker down to find a way to get a stop here. But that's definitely a tough break for Banks. It looked like it hit East Hall and went out of bounds off of them there on the deflection. Checking back into the game. Devin Watson for East Hall as well as number 10, Tyler Brown. Well, Watson and Brown both have given them good minutes. Brown's a, a young man that will be involved with the EBA Top 40 Series this spring. Excited to get him in the, in the mix as you see Davenport. And we've talked about the stuff that it's done for him just in terms of the confidence, the skill, and the ability with a great pass there. Finish by Morse. Well, there's that depth we talk about. You know, we haven't mentioned Morse all night up to this point. They have so many bodies that they can run at you. Kids end up, you know, I say getting lost for lack of a better term, but it gives you a chance to shine. Tough play there by Wiley. He's been big for them. That's six in the quarter, according to Vince Smith. And that three-pointer is going to sail out of bounds. We appreciate you joining us here as we end the third quarter. It is a 53 to 57 game now in favor of East Hall. Banks County trying to do what they do. There we see Kane to Venable. Oh, that's what he does, Marcus. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. You're watching the SUV TV Tuesday Night Showcase presented by Peach State Basketball. about ready to get the fourth quarter started. Marcus Burnett joined by Brandon Clay. It is a four point game. East Hall with the lead. Brandon, we're in store for a great fourth quarter. This, is, this has been a great game, you know, really from the, the opening tip, you know, so to speak. It's just been one of those games, a lot of different pieces, you know, in terms of people being involved. Obviously, Davenport was big for East Hall early. You see what this call. There it is, when we talked about the foul trouble now. Kane, 
now with his fourth foul, I mean, he played 12 seconds. seconds. Kane is going to have a seed in, in this place. Number five, Will Ledford. Well, Ledford's a guy capable of making a three-pointer for the, especially off the steeple and the penetration, so keep an eye on that. And Banks County's done a good job of extending out this zone, forcing the tough shots like that one from Cooper. Oh, and we get the bang slam from him as he hits the three balls, he falls to the ground. What a game for him here already with Cooper. And he took a hand to the face in that one. That, that's, that's shooting the ball no matter what the opposition is. But it's been what Cooper's been doing it all night. Timing three-point shooting on top of the hustle plays. Wiley off the mark on that jumper. Well, Venable working inside. He's no good. 17 tonight for Cooper already. Four threes. Look at Wiley right there with the hustle. Man, between him or and Venable, those guys stay cleaning up the mess around the glass. He makes it a 55 to 60 game. That three-pointer by Cooper. They answer right back with scrappy hustle plays there on the offensive glass. They pull it to within five. Here's Cooper with it. Over to Brown. Brown, two-pointer. If it goes, no good. Wiley with the strong rebound. Here comes Steeple. He's got Leffert running with him. Instead, he stops, pops. First, first mid-range shot he's missed in a while. I was just about to say, those are shots that he's been hitting all game long, so you want to encourage him to keep taking them. You know, you're on the break. Definitely had a, a spot to take that there. 10 to 12-foot jumper. And the way he's been shooting it, that's like a layup. Watson. It's deep inside there, but he's going to be poked out of bounds by Wiley. Two substitutions back into the game for East Hall. Number 22, Jaquin Hopkins, and number 42, Roderick Huey. Well, Hopkins has been impressive. I know we've talked a lot about Huey on the glass. Hopkins has given them some really good minutes. He hasn't scored the ball the way, say, a Cooper has, but his steadying influence along with Watson, along with um, Brown on the wing, has given them the perimeter play they've needed to offset Steeple's play for Banks County. And, you know, you get the feeling that Steeples, you know, while continuing to play hard, like he's reserving, keeping just a little bit in the tank because he knows how this game is going to come down. And he's going to, he's going to need those jets as we no, get closer to crunch time. No question. I think one of the things we talked about, in the way they were playing early, I said you don't want Steeple to have to play that breakneck speed for 31 minutes. And they've been able to kind of keep the game within striking distance, you know, being up at times, being down at times, but always within single digits one way or the other, while keeping him from having to do too much. He had that about two-minute spurt late in the second where he was almost forcing the issue. And he's tall, too, to their credit. They've done a good job of keeping a fresh body on him. Like right there. They've done a great job of keeping a fresh body on him. And this is where the foul trouble with Kane comes into play. Kane normally is the second ball handler in that position. Now you've got Leffert in a tough spot where he's having to serve as that against East Hall's pressure. So they forced a five-second violation there. Here's Davenport driving baseline, gets Venable in the air. Venable able to still recover and block Look at him run one. the floor. Look at Austin Venable run that floor. In a position to rebound, <laughs> and it's ice cream inside. And it's, it's why it's so important. Venable makes the great play, almost gets caught out of position there defensively, changes the shot, gets a hand on it, sprints the length of the floor, and then is able to put himself in a position to rebound it on the glass and finish it. 57 to 62, six minutes on the dot. That's 18 now for Venable. Davenport with 28, having a big time night on the night of which he scored his thousandth career point. This is gonna be a story they tell in Rabbit Town for years if East Hall is able to manage to hold on and win this game. The night that Davenport scored his thousandth point, and then you start talking about the game itself. And Davenport's got his thousand point, but Tristan Cooper, you talked about that makeshift student section that Come they on, forced man. Banks County to make. <laughs> they got a great court size seat of that splash. Could have been a three point play as he was knocked right there into the student section. He's been shooting it well all night. He's a gamer, man. He's earned, not only put himself on our radar, but he's earned himself an invitation to the Elite Basketball Academy Top 40 workout on March the 8th. The SUVTV will be covering once again in conjunction with PeachStateBasketball.com. Five point game under 545. Nice work along the baseline <laughs> and in the elevation. I love to be able to jump like that outside of a video game. The night when Cotton Davenport scored his thousandth point. That's how we're going to start the recap on this one. What a night that young man's having. Couldn't happen to a better kid. This is a great game. East Hall's pressure now has changed the pace of it. 
think definitely got to think Banks has one more run left in them. Only down seven here, but they've got to find a way to get a stop and be able to turn a couple of stops into a couple of buckets here in the next eh, 90 seconds of gameplay. And got to minimize the turnover. They had a five-second violation. They turn it over right there. Got to give yourself a chance. Wiley says, don't worry. We'll make up for it. He gets the steal. Steeple gets it ahead to Leffert. One stop, one basket. Let's cut the game to five. Now you need a second stop and a second basket. Get this thing back to a one-possession game here in the next. And I said 90 seconds, so you still got another minute and 20 to be able to make that happen. But you get to that four-minute mark, you want this thing one way or the other as a one-possession game if you're Banks County. There's Watson in the corner. Brings it out of there over to Hopkins. Hopkins with the jump stop and the shot. Tough shot right there. Got into a little space. Boy, you see Watson staying running in front like of a, steeple. Running like a gazelle out there, man. Man. Well, and anytime you can stay shoulder to shoulder with the guy that has the basketball, not knowing exactly where he is, it lets you know the end-to-end -end speed that you got. Joe Dix gives him a congratulatory high five, and rightfully so. What a great play. You talked about how tough it is when you've got relatively fresh Vikings coming in and off that bench like hotcakes the whole game. Can't be easy. Well, and you've seen a couple of examples of that now. Steeple's been short on his last two pull-ups. Those are shots he was hitting calmly in the first half. As Once again, it's not that it's a bad shot, but your sea legs, per se, start to go out on you a little bit. Good move there by Orr. Uh, tough half hook, though. Want to take one more dribble, get both feet in the lane and make a play. But East Hall runs so many bodies at you, man. At some point, it starts to wear on you a little bit, and you're seeing that a little bit right now here with Banks County. Look at that play by Davenport. He saves it, creates another opportunity. Second offensive oh. rebound of the possession. Kisses it in off the window and lets the crowd know, let's go. Well, his energy level, he's got 32 now, according to Vince Smith, PSB over there with the EBA score sheet. Oh, tough move by Steeple. And we'll get Davenport with the block. Great move and attack. You can see Banks a little tired. You start to wonder, you know, if you're Coach Cleveland, if you can hit these free throws, is this the time maybe you get a full, just for a break? You know, East Hall runs so many more bodies at you then you're able to run at them. You know, Banks is still building what is going to be a great program, but they don't have the depth yet of an East Hall that's been doing this since Frank Davis played here, and Frank's coaching at Tennessee Tech now. Sixty to sixty-eight. Four minutes. One second left on the clock. I mean, think about this. They just subbed out four guys, two of whom were Tristan Cooper. And come on Davenport with four minutes left to go in the game. Who gets to do that? You know, I mean, what a luxury in terms of what they've built in that regard, where you have such good players and, and such good products of your system, even more so than that here for Joe Dix, where you can make that adjustment knowing that you're going to be able to steal 40, 45 seconds and they're going to be fresh, where Banks is only able to sub out Venable one at a time. Got to be a great feeling to have going into key region play. That ball tipped out of bounds, going to be last touch by Yui. It'll go over to Banks County as they trail by eight. Three minutes, 36 seconds left on the clock. Well, and every possession becomes so critical. You know, just a second ago, you were in a spot to cut this thing to one. Did you see Wiley handle the ball here? Oh, it's looking like it's going to be a charge. Yeah, he had two sitting there waiting on him. Got to feel that. Got to feel that if you're the young fella. Got to know that they're waiting on you. Go ahead and jump, stop, and kick it, man. You know, and that's multiple times tonight. Banks has had the opportunity, whether it's Wiley, whether it's Simmons in the first half, to jump, stop, and kick it as opposed to running through the defenders. And I mean, you're just seeing the battle of attrition as far as East Hall, these waves of substitutions. You can see the fatigue on, on Steeple, on Simmons. The crossover, nice recovery there, though. Spin move. And it's going to be a foul call on the floor but it's a penalty situation, so it'll be one and one. Yeah. Well, and it looks like, you know, you talk about Kane, too, you know, the foul trouble even with him. That's a guy that you would love to have played 26, 28 minutes tonight in this game, but foul trouble has kept you from doing that. So the, the war of attrition depth-wise in terms of fatigue, but also the war of attrition as you see Kane going back in now to play whatever he's got left. Hopefully he doesn't pick up his fifth foul and he's able to stay in, but... It's been a war of attrition, both depth-wise and foul-wise. Three minutes, seven seconds remaining. Is we're going to have free throw opportunity here for Banks County. 
Well, and if you're East Hall, you've got to convert your free throws. You know, 68-60 isn't a, a done deal by any means. You've got to convert your free throws. You've got to continue to keep playing, keep making plays, keep making things happen. Headed to the free throw line now, it is Kamal Wiley. Got the first Big two shot. points of the half for Banks County. Key free throw there. Got to be able to take advantage of chances to score without the clock moving. It's been a big night for Wiley. He's got 13 on the night. Uh, I say a quiet 13, but I can recall most of the baskets. We've been talking about him a good bit. Making free throws, he's been a difference maker. If Banks is able to come back and go home with this victory, he's a big reason why. He's done a great job. Once again, Kane in foul trouble, Venable or having good nights. And Wiley's been a nice third piece there on the interior for the Leopards. Davenport has it up top. So over to Brown. Brown with the crossover, gets a couple oohs and ahs. Can't get the shot to go. Now it's in the hands of Steeple. The Leopards of Banks County trailing by six. Risky pass. Ooh. Nearly stolen by Davenport. And Davenport almost met some of his fans, man. Close, <laughs> close up and impersonal there, man. What a great effort. Both sides and Steeple felt that trap coming. We talked about that in the girls' game, too. The 1 2 2 extended the half court. Feeling that before you get caught in the trap on the front side of it, and you got four defenders with the sideline and the half line. Oh, what a play by Watson. A fresh Watson all over play. it. Well, and there's that depth. I mean, he obviously, he's fast, tired, or not tired. But anytime, man, here's a steal. You got rotation, guys. Cooper gets a blow. Look at this. Look at this. And it's the ability, Joe Diggs is height. This is good as Joe Diggs right here. You got to love this guy. Look at him clapping. He, he thought about jumping up and meeting he Cooper did, in he the did. air. He caught himself, he like, <laughs> Coach Diggs was on the verge, pinstripes and all. He was about to Yo, take the lead. Joe Diggs almost went in the air. Oh, he went, nah, I better not do that if I want to go home with both knees intact tonight, man. I gotta, love that guy. You got to love it as we look at the CoachHemi.com and the replay that was right after a steal in a bucket. They get another one. Lara kicks it to Cooper. Cooper with the layup drill, and it's good basketball. Look at that bitch. You look at Joe Dix on the floor. You got to love that energy and the passion. You wonder why these kids play the way they do in Rabbit Town. It's because Joe Dix coaches the way he does. Awesome. 62 to 72. Is the ball game right now. Two minutes, 15 seconds left to play. Venable kicks it back out. Simmons going to dial up a three. Good look. Off the mark. Wiley with another offensive oh, rebound. Got Davenport in the air. Well, and remember, Marcus, it was just 68 to 62. Zesman Steeple had the ball right in front of us. It was Banks County basketball. I mean, that was 35 seconds of gameplay ago. So it's always interesting to remember how quickly this game can change. Two possessions later, two scores later, East Hall with the lead back in double digits. 2.06 on the clock, 63 to 72. Uh, noteworthy, that's the fourth foul there on Davenport. Obviously, Joe Dix is going to let him play with two minutes remaining, but something for us to keep an eye on. You, know, you, you look right now, there's no Huey in the game. Davenport, the only rim protector. So if they're able to get a stop here and somehow get that fifth foul on Davenport, it really changes the complexion of the game still with right around two minutes to play. I think you're going to see East Hall be patient, not stall per se, but definitely take their time and run some clock. Well, it would be interesting to see if Coach Mike Cleveland decides to extend the game. They played great defense there. They actually got the stop. Here's Simmons. He's got two Vikings on him. Gets it to Wiley. Back out to Simmons. And probably a good decision there. Simmons had a look at three, but they've been getting such good stuff on the inside and the interior. Oh, great block there by Davenport. Coach Cleveland looking for a foul, but looked like that one was pretty clean as far as high school defensive plays go. And I think part of it, you know, again, I know we've mentioned the depth of East Hall, but you looked at that last three-pointer by Simmons, the legs were gone on it. Mm -hmm. He felt that. He was looking to pass that ball. He knew he had a wide open shot, and he was looking to pass that ball on that last play, just given where his legs are at right now. Uh, tough timeout call there on a baseline out of bounds situation. Timeout so precious yeah. down the stretch of this game. You want to at least be able to inbound and make a play before you have to call a timeout, but not the case here. One minute, 19 seconds. It's been a great Tuesday night showcase here presented by Peach State Basketball. It's been a great Great weekend. 
be sure to stick with us on, on Saturday as well. We'll have some webcasts from the Hilton Invitational over at Norcross Basketball. Brandon Clay will be joining me on the mic for the 2.30 p.m. game uh, on that slate. I'm excited. That's a great – I mean, they do a great job every year. Big shout-out to Jesse McMillan, the whole crew over there, the Hilton uh, Invitational crew, man. That's become a yearly stop for us. They've got a marquee matchup. Woo! Pebble Book and DeMatha, man. Young DJ Harvey coming all the way down from the D.C. area. What a treat for those of you who haven't seen that young man play. Had the opportunity to watch him multiple times, and he's a, he's a gamer. Kane going to try the three-pointer. Long rebound. Look at Wiley. Look at Wiley go track it. Wiley not giving up. He's not going to go down without a fight. Oh, look at Cooper. Oh, his shoulder. He got him. He's all right, boy. That's a good way to get your shoulder popped out messing around with Wiley and Kane on that, on that right. floor. That's not what you want, man. He's part contortion is there on that play, He's shaking it off. A lesser man would be out for the game. Yeah. Right? A lesser man being myself. <laughs> <laughs> One minute, nine seconds left to play. Oh, you see Venable with the post immediate. They, not, they don't feed him, but they get the ball back in the cane. Oh, they're going to wave the basket off, call that foul there, Huey on the floor, but it will send Kane to the free throw line. And now at this point, both teams are in the double bonus. Huey is fouled out, which becomes especially big once again now. If they can get this fifth foul in here on Davenport somehow in the next 10 to 15 seconds of gameplay, this game changes. Yeah. Now you lose that rim protector if you're East Hall if that happens. Devin Watson checks back in. Watson a senior. He's definitely defended like a senior here in this game. When he's made some timely baskets, the, the defensive play, the, the transition layup, the right on left a minute ago. Ah, missed shot there by Kane. Those are the kind of shots we talked about the conversion early, and Banks needing to make free throws, and this is exactly when it shows up. Can't afford to miss these shots this late in the game. 0 for 2, Davenport with the rebound. Em empty trip there. You know, you use the timeout on the baseline out of bounds situation. You know, empty, empty trip, unfortunately, for Banks at a time when they couldn't afford an empty trip. That pass looked too oh, tall. Davenport. That could have been the fifth one there on Davenport. They didn't get him, but that could have easily been the fifth foul there on Davenport. Looked like Venable had control, took a little bump there. East Hall fortunate. 45.7 left to play here in this one. This game has definitely been as good as advertised. You knew about the Davenport Venable matchup coming into it, and neither one of those fellas disappointing. Forty-five point seven seconds left. As you know, you look at the the next couple games ahead for Banks County. Well, they've got Dawson County Friday night. Definitely a game that they've got to go handle business with. And then a week off before they see Franklin. So, you know, coming down the home stretch here with the region, just four games left inside of their region. And all four very winnable games. When you talk about a team that's 17-3 and three coming into tonight's contest. And really, this region on the boys' side shaping up to be a battle between East Hall and a battle between Banks here for the region championship. Another timeout on the floor. And Brandon, as far as the, the road ahead for uh, for East Hall, you know, give us an outlook on their next couple games. Ahead. Well, when you talk about games that are actually in region games, and so when you look at that, you know, they've got Lumpkin fanning away, both very winnable games, West Hall here, Franklin County for senior night. But the game that really sticks out is on the 31st of January, a Saturday night. Let me tell you something, young fella. There will not be a seat in this house by the middle of gir by the girls' game. By halftime of the girls' game, this place will be jam-packed to capacity. And uh, chances are I'll be here, man. I'll be at Georgia Tech the night before they play Florida State. I'll be at Texas the night before that they play Oklahoma. And uh, January 31st, I might tiptoe over here to Gainesville, or Gaines Esau, and watch them play Gainesville, man. That's always a, an awesome atmosphere for a game. I'll bring a couple of my friends with me, too. I love this matchup with East Hall. And haven't gotten Demarcus Simons on SUV TV since EBA camp. 
uh, as well. Man, I tell you what, that young fella uh, is having a great season over there at Gainesville. Had the opportunity to talk with his crew yesterday over there at Sam Allen's event. As you see, Davenport knocked down that free throw here with a chance to stretch it to 10. But some great basketball on the way to close out the season. That game was one of the highlights. Davenport, productive trip to the free throw line, makes it 64 to 74. That's 34 for Davenport on the night. 34 out of the 74. Or a nice pass there on the interior to Venable. He got held and no call there, but great catch on his part. The body all over him, still finishing at 74 66 here, Marcus. 31.1 seconds left to play. You mentioned the first line of the recap will say on a night where Kevon Davenport scored his 1,000 points. Brandon, you work with a ton of players, whether it be through the EBA circuit as well as the full slate of Peach State basketball events. When you look at a player like Davenport that started off at one point, even as Coach Joe Dix mentioned, as far as this game, very raw, not being able to hit layups when he first started. And to see where he's come now, talk about that kind of progression and what hard work can well, do. Well, it's just awesome. Him. Like, you know, I, I, I got a great tweet. Sam Allen actually tweeted at me. I was talking about Ty Cockfield, who had 46 and a win the other night. Another EV All-American. He had 44 tonight, by the way. Sam said, a lot of work in empty gyms for nights like those. And if you're Davenport, a lot of skill work, a lot of Coach Joe Dix yelling at you at practice. I mean, there have been a lot of days where I'm sure he's gone home like, man, if this dude doesn't leave me alone. And Joe Dix doesn't leave him alone because he knows that he can get this result. And so I think to sum that thought up, you put in a lot of work when nobody's watching for nights just like this. 30 seconds away from securing the victory here on this milestone night. Hey, sit, sitting on his number right now, that 34, he'll have a chance <laughs> to get two and be able to stretch this thing back out to a double-digit game. And, you know, it looks like, once again, assuming they can convert these free throws, they're going to go home with this victory in hand. First free throw on the way, count it. Had a couple nights as well in the past where I was sitting on my number, B. Clay. Uh, unfortunately, my number was zero. Hey, you and me both, man. At least we're on the same <laughs> team, man. <laughs> Second free throw in and out of there. Rebound by Orr. As you can see, Steeples. Good pass. <laughs> see Cleveland with the timeout there. A seven-point game here with 18.8 left. And you know, I think you want to obviously pick up full. If the ball gets entered, you probably foul right away. Uh, just to extend the game at this point, if you're Mike Cleveland, maybe one more possession and pray that East Hall misses a couple. If you can get it back underneath, then, then you roll with it. But otherwise, man, you've probably seen the, the, the best that you're going to get from, from your group this night. But this is going to be a great one to chart here as we get into February in the region tournament. Can Banks defeat East Hall for the region championship? You know, I think that's something we definitely got to keep an eye on at this point. But they've shown they're capable. They've shown they have the talent. And on a given night that they can do it, it's just a matter of playing for 32 end to end. And this is one of those situations that there's not going to be a lot of leeway for them to have an off two or three minutes. Yeah. You know, you're going to have to be able to be locked in and engaged almost the entire way through. Here's we're getting something straight. And it looks like it's a timeout call situation that Banks is supposed to have one remaining. The officials touch base to get it squared away. We've got 18.8 uh, left on the clock. Well, it's one of those things, man. Uh, a, a note for those of you who keep the book, you always want to keep your time. You know, the time of which things were called during the course of the game a full at seven minutes and 10 seconds and you know that kind of stuff man coach cleveland coach cleveland not happy with the explanation he's gotten up to this point but it appears we're going to resume play yeah unfortunately you have to go with the home book man the home book is uh it's all's book man <laughs> tough break <laughs> We'll have some more free throw practice. This well, time's going to be Hopkins. I was about to say, Hopkins has done a great job. Let's see if he can knock these couple down. But 
smooth lefty has given Joe Dix some great minutes here tonight. You know, a couple of tough jumpers, the mid-range that he hit late, that Zesman steeple impression of his own, you know, that it, it looked good. And really a guy that alongside Cooper gives them a threat at any moment to be able to knock down a shot. So even on a night when Brown isn't rolling the perimeter, still plenty of options here for Joe Dix Vikings. He's done a great job with this team. I'm really excited to watch them the rest of the way. Those that feel that the mid-range is a lost art, this game would definitely make them happy. And you talked about Hopkins as well as Steeple. Well, this is one we need to put in the vault. We need to let Chris Watkins and Jonathan Hemingway take a look at this one and debate with each other about the mid-range jump. That's always a fun debate. I'm on Hemi's side when it comes to that one. But Chris, <laughs> it's tough because Chris Watkins sees a ton of game film with this Prospects Nation TV work, so you got to give it credence. Who's that smacking it against the window? It's Davenport. Uh oh, Cooper. we got him on the floor. Ah, Cooper with the finish. I wanted to see one off the glass, so I won't lie to you, young fella. I wanted to see one off the glass to close down that night for Davenport. But what a what a special night for that guy to get his thousand, to get a win. Uh, Banks County shown us a lot here, even in defeat. I, I'm excited about the direction that both of these programs are headed. You've got the the hunted in East Hall. You got the hunter in Banks County, and both of them have set the stage for a great finale, maybe in the region championship. So it is 68 to 79. That's going to do it. We appreciate you watching this SUV TV Tuesday night showcase presented by Peach State Basketball. I'm Marcus Burnett. He's Brandon Clay. We'll catch you here next time. Yeah.